All right, everybody, welcome to today's autopilot webinar. My name is Matt Van Loan, and I'm going to be walking you guys through the product today. Um, before we get started, just a few quick things to run through. Um, if you guys haven't already noticed, because of the number of attendees we have on today's webinar, unfortunately, you're not able to just speak out loud, but you are able to ask as many questions as you guys would like throughout today's webinar. So if you haven't seen it yet, if you look at the GoToWebinar interface, there should be a questions section there. Um, I keep my eye on that question section throughout the entire demonstration, so feel free to ask as many questions as you would like. I'll stop wherever we're at, and I'm happy to expand on any particular part of the system uh, that you want to dive into. And you know, if you see something as we're going through the product, feel free to just ask a question, and I can just stop there and expand on it. Um, Really quickly before we jump into the live demo, we're just going to run through a little bit of background on who Autopilot is and some of the products, or sorry, some of the features that we offer as well as some of the customers that use Autopilot. So I'm going to start here. We've got about three or four slides. It should only take a few minutes and then we'll jump on into the live demo. So just a quick background on Autopilot. Autopilot was founded in 2012 by three founders. Um, all three are brothers from Australia. And... We've been around now with this latest version of our product since March, so um, about seven, eight months at this point. We've got nearly 50 employees, hopefully here by the end of 2015, which is coming up quick. We've raised $20.5 million from Salesforce Ventures, Stage One Capital, and Rembrandt Venture Partners. Um, on the bottom left here, just a few of the products that we integrate with. So if you're a Salesforce customer, we have a very cool integration with Salesforce that'll allow you not only to bring in all of your users from Salesforce, but you can also go ahead and create campaigns off of custom data from your Salesforce instance. You can also push data back and forth between the two systems. Um, we also integrate with Twilio, so you can go ahead and send SMS messages out um, from Autopilot from your own Twilio account if you'd like based on certain campaign criteria that you can set. We also integrate with Slack for internal notifications, Segment IO, so you can actually fire campaigns off of segment events that someone might um, do in your app. You can also go ahead and use our good data integration for reporting and analytics. And then lastly, we integrate with Zapier, which gives you access to hundreds of other products that you can actually um, start campaigns with. So I'm seeing a question coming through here. I'm gonna take a quick look, one second. So one of the questions coming through is, does Autopilot integrate um, with the group edition of Salesforce? Um, that's a great question, Rissa. I can double check here really quickly, um, but I'll have to confirm. I'm not entirely sure. So let's just see if I can pull that up really quickly. Oh, actually, I think there's, there we go. So it looks like um, professional enterprise unlimited developer and performance. So it looks like unfortunately we don't currently support um, personal or group additions. Just very quickly jumping back into the slide. On the right-hand side here, and Marissa, I'll try to get you a little bit more information. And if you'd like to jump on a call as well, um, we can set up a personal one-to-one -one call to, to walk through some of the Salesforce options that we have. And I'm um, happy to speak more about that as well. On the right-hand side here, just a few customers really quickly I'd like to point out. We've got Dolby, Freshdesk, Narrative. So we've got B2B companies. We also have a lot of B2C companies as well. Um, so if you guys have any questions about use cases or particular customers, more than happy to um, you know set up a call to speak to that as well. Very quickly, we'll run through this NPS slide, but if you guys aren't familiar with NPS, NPS basically gives your customers, uh, it's basically a survey where you would ask your customers how likely they would be to recommend your product or service to a friend or family member. So um, it's basically, you know, how popular are you with your customers and how likely would they be to share um, you know, positive word of mouth about your product. Unfortunately, Autopilot's got a very high MPS score right now. So um, if you're looking for reviews about our product, there's plenty online. The G2 crowd, we have got tons of reviews on there. Um, so by all means, you know, do some research on our product. Let us know what you think. But um, so far, um, the positive feedback we're receiving online has just been outstanding. And again, on the right here, just breaking out a few more customers based on um, particular verticals. So as you can see, we've got a lot of e-commerce clients, we've got SaaS clients, we also have 
you know, B2C hardware clients. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions about any of our use cases or our customers, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Alrighty, so getting down to the last slide here. Um, if you haven't actually leveraged marketing automation before, um, these are just a few of the benefits that you can actually immediately start to recognize uh, if you use a product like Autopilot. And this survey isn't particular just Autopilot, but people who have launched personalized onboarding journeys or campaigns generally recognize anywhere from 25% and up increase in customer engagement in their products or services. Um, systematic nurturing of leads. So if you've got tons of people who have come to your website and you know filled out a form that are interested and it's been a while since you've re-engaged them, by using a product like Autopilot to do uh, lead nurturing, you can basically go ahead and actually reactivate anywhere to 2% or more of old leads. And we actually recognize around 2% of our own leads signing back up down the line. So a few months after trials expired, people will come back based on some of the emails we send them and then actually end up purchasing. So these are just a few of the benefits to marketing automation. I'm not going to spend a, too much time on this slide, but if you guys want me to send this over to you after, I'd be happy to do that. So in today's live demo, what we're going to be covering here is we're going to do a quick run through of the product, which will incorporate how you can actually add and manage your users in Autopilot. So whether it's bringing them in from a spreadsheet or importing them from another system, um, we'll go through that in a bit of detail so you guys can actually um, get up and running in your trials and go ahead and kick the tires. Also from there, we're gonna go into building a campaign from scratch. So we call them journeys. Um, we're all about the customer journey, as we say here at Autopilot. Um, and we'll go through that process. So we can either take a vote and build a specific type of campaign, or I can just kind of show you guys a general campaign that um, you might leverage in our product. From there, we'll jump into a little bit about reporting and analytics. So we do have um, reporting, and we'll go through what it looks like to report on specific emails or entire campaigns. And then lastly, we'll kind of touch on the integrations that we offer. So the Salesforce integration probably, as well as some of the other cool integrations that we offer. And we have a Q&A session at the end of this, but by all means, no need to wait till the end of the webinar to ask questions. If you see something you're interested in throughout today's demo, just go ahead and type it into the questions box and I'll stop. And um, again, we'll just go into more detail on that. So we'll go ahead and start off. Um, we do have a 30% discount that's good through the end of the year. Uh, if you're interested in buying on an annual commitment, um, it's just something that we're offering through December. So uh, this is the code. No worries, I'll go ahead and send this to you guys as well so you don't have to write it down right now, but just wanted to let you guys know that we do have this offer going as well. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and let's start the live demonstration. So when you first sign up for Autopilot, and in case you guys haven't already, if you go to the Autopilot website, you have the ability to sign up for a free 30-day trial. That 30-day trial basically is a fully functioning account. So you have the ability to not only go ahead and create campaigns where you can send emails or SMS messages and get familiar with how the platform works, but you can also go ahead and actually set up your Autopilot account so that when your trial expires, you can simply go in and pay with your credit card if you want and your account's fully functional. So you didn't actually have to spend 30 days of paid usage to go through that configuration process. So I highly recommend if you haven't already, you can sign up for a free trial and just get familiar with the product and even go ahead and you know configure it. So once you've signed up for that trial, when you first log in, you're gonna end up on this first dashboard page. And the dashboard here is kind of a real-time stream of information based on what customers or prospects are doing with the campaigns that we're engaging them through. So on the right hand side, I can see if someone's visited pages on my website. I can see if they've done things like opened up emails that I've sent them or if they've clicked on in product messaging that we've um, popped up on the website. So it's kind of like a real time stream here and this will just give you some information that'll kind of validate if your campaigns are being affected. On the left hand side, we can see information like how many people clicked on the links and the emails that we sent them. Conversions are considered by people filling out forms on your website through Autopilot. If you're using a CRM like Salesforce, we can see as a result of people clicking on the links and filling out forms, how many leads we generated and how many sales opportunities as a result um, we created. And then ultimately, if you win any of that business, we'll see here at the bottom you know, how much revenue you've attained through your campaign. So we kind of give you the whole perspective on your marketing funnel here on the left-hand side. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna recommend as we get started here is when you sign up for your trial, I'd recommend implementing this tracking code. 
So you've got a tracking code on the, on the settings page here, and this tracking code allows you to track what your users are doing on your website. So by adding this tracking code to the header of your website, you can actually track what pages people are visiting. Um, you can even add this code to any of your landing pages or to your help desk. So anywhere that you can access um, the code uh, on your website or in your ecosystem, you can add this. And this doesn't only apply to websites. You can also add it to your own web app or mobile app. And if you do the app option, you're going to want to check this box. It's a little bit different code, which should run a little bit faster for apps. But this will allow you to track what people are doing. And as you'll see in our campaign builder in a moment, you can actually create campaigns that are based on certain pages that people have visited or pages that they haven't visited. So again, this is kind of a good starting point if you have the option or you have the access to your website to add that. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start off by just going through managing contacts in Autopilot. And there's a few different ways that you can get users into your Autopilot account. Now, if you're just going to try the system out and you just wanna kick the tires with a few uh, test users, you can actually just add contacts one by one here by hitting the add a contact option. Now, if you have a list of users that you wanna upload, you can go through our import contacts option here. And there's two primary ways to import all of your contacts. So you can import from a spreadsheet, which is a really easy process. What's pretty cool about our spreadsheet option is that um, it's actually going to scour any of the columns that you have on the spreadsheet. So for instance, if you have a spreadsheet which has people's name, email, and company, but you also have custom fields like what products have they purchased, what's the lifetime value of this customer, our product will find all of those columns and it will actually go ahead and ask if you wanna create custom fields in our product so that you can then track that information on the contact level. And then you can use some of that custom data when you're creating targeted segments. Down below here, you also have the ability to import users from a number of different integrations. So if you use Zapier, for instance, you can bring all of your users in from one of your CRMs, from your e-commerce solution. We also have that Salesforce integration. So you can bring in all of your Salesforce um, contacts into Autopilot as well. Now, once you bring in all of your users, you'll have the ability to build lists out. And on the left here, there's quite a lot of lists in my trial account. You can create folders to actually better um, organize all of your users. So uh, this is probably not the best way of doing it, but I, I give a lot of demos here. Um, but you can go ahead and create lists by manually adding people to a certain list. So for instance, if you wanted to say, I wanna send out a newsletter to all of my customers um, who are in the US, I could create a list of US customers. Um, that basically is a manual process where I would add people to the list and build it out. Now we also have what are called smart segments. And smart segments, unlike a list, which I have to manually generate, smart segments are automatically created. So I could go ahead and call this my targeted audience, and maybe I wanna send out um, a special promo to my users who are really engaged um, with my marketing campaigns. And I'll show you guys how we can do that. So with a smart segment, we can basically create a dynamic list here and this dynamic list will be um, determined by the different options that I select. So unlike uh, the list I was speaking to earlier, which again I just say I want to add one off each person to this list, here in the smart segment I can go ahead and actually refine based on specific criteria like what pages of my website have these people visited, um, have they interacted with any of the emails I've sent them, <clears throat> any of the contact fields that I'm tracking on the contact page. So if I added those custom users So here I'll give you guys a quick example, but um, in my contact fields here, I can go ahead and I have access to all the custom fields that I could have added to the system, either through my bulk upload or if I just manually create custom fields. But for instance, I want to go ahead and double check if I want to say, did someone visit the pricing page, for instance, I'll say is true. And you can go ahead and add multiple options here. So I could say, you know, have they visited another page? Have they submitted a form on my website? So maybe I can check if they filled out the contact form. And then if I hit continue, what's going to happen is it's going to generate a list of all the users in my account that meet this criteria. And then I can go ahead and send an email or push them into a campaign. Now, as people meet these criteria in the future, they can automatically be added to a smart segment. So for instance, I can say, as soon as a user visits my pricing page and signs up for a trial, then add them to this targeted audience list. And that can basically be a rolling list, which people will be added to as they meet that criteria. Any questions so far here on the user management side of the system?
Okay, looks like uh, no questions so far. So what I'll do is we'll move into the actual campaign builder right now. So in order to build campaigns in autopilot, you're basically gonna click on the left paper airplane here, and this is where all of your campaigns will live. Now you have the ability to narrow down to just ones that are actively running. Um, the drafts folder, as you're building campaigns, are automatically saved to your drafts folder. You can also reaccess campaigns that you might have run in the past that you may wanna reactivate. Now, a really cool thing about autopilot as you get started is if you're new to marketing automation or you simply wanna get familiar um, with how to, let me close this out here real quick. Um, if you wanna get familiar with how to build out campaigns in our product, then um, what we can do is on the side here, um, we have guides that are pre-built. So you can actually leverage um, campaigns immediately as soon as you sign up for a trial. So for instance, if you wanna start a life cycle nurturing campaign, we've got a few recommended campaigns pre-built for you here. And if you click on these, you can implement the campaign within your account. All you have to do at that point is change out the content with your own content, and then you can launch it. So again, we've got newsletters, onboarding recommendations. So really, Autopilot helps you get up and running really quickly by giving you access to probably over 30 pre-built campaigns that you can choose to leverage. Now, you can also just take a look at how we built them out and then you know, create your own journey just using these as a blueprint. What we're gonna do right now though is we're gonna build our own journey from scratch and we'll just click on this shape here. <clears throat> Alrighty, so the first thing I wanna point out, and this is where we're really gonna get into uh, sort of the, the main parts of autopilot. Um, what we have here is um, basically a blank canvas and we can go ahead and start by naming this journey. So um, do you guys have any particular types of campaigns you would like to see um, done here in the demo today? I'm happy to take a vote. Generally, we'll go through an onboarding um, journey, which would be, you know, what does it look like when someone signs up for a trial on your website and how do we engage them through a number of emails over the span of a, maybe a few weeks to try and get them using the system. This is generally a common thing, um, but I'll just go ahead and ask if there's anything you guys are particularly interested in. So one of the questions here is uh, onboarding, um, someone signs up for a live event or a first time buyer. Um, okay, great. So that's a pretty common process. So for instance, if someone signs up for an event or someone fills out a form on our website or someone signs up for a trial, so we'll kind of go through this onboarding process and we'll start out by using the concept of someone going to our website, maybe filling out a form. So we'll go ahead and thanks for the feedback, everybody. So now that we've named this, we'll call this onboarding <clears throat> journey here and we'll just lock that in. Now on the right hand side, we've got a number of shapes and these shapes basically um, can accomplish three primary things. We have triggers, and triggers are how you generally would start a campaign with autopilot. So think of a trigger as someone filling out a form on the website, or me manually sending a newsletter out to a group of people, um, or if data, like custom field about somebody changes, that can start a campaign, like if someone switches over from being a prospect to a paying customer. Um, down below that, we have actions, and actions are what we want to do once we've started a campaign. So actions are things like sending an email, sending a text message, or a physical postcard, popping up um, a message on a website. So these are all things that you can do with Autopilot. And then down below, we have conditions, and conditions we would leverage to check against certain types of data. Like for instance, before we send someone an email, um, asking them to sign up for our product, we may want to check to ensure that they're not already a paying customer. Or we may want to see if someone's visited a page um, before we send them an email asking them to check out a page on our website. So again, conditions can check against custom data, they can check against um, users' history, things like that. Now, the way that Autopilot works is once you've added that tracking code to your website, you can um, go ahead and connect any of your existing contact forms. So if you guys already have existing forms on your website, you don't have to rebuild those for autopilot. Fortunately, you can just use this trigger here, which is form submitted. Now you can drop the shapes anywhere you want onto the canvas. Um, and you can build these um, from top to bottom or left to right. I've got a question coming through really quick. Hello, does the trigger have to be an item initiated in autopilot or can it be a visit from organic search? Um, so, 
That's a good question. Basically, um, if somebody simply comes to your website, um, you would need them to take an action in order to be initiated into one of our campaigns. So whether they fill out a form and that drives them into your database with their email there, or if you um, basically collect their email address and add them to a list, those are two ways that you can kick off a campaign with Autopilot. Um, unfortunately, someone just searching and arriving at your homepage is not quite enough to actually initiate a campaign. You do need to have them provide their email address and name in order to initiate a campaign through a trigger. So um, we can still see when they visit the page. So we'll see that an anonymous user has visited your website. We just can't actually um, market to them unless we have an email address or a name and some information about them. Now, if they arrive through an organic search and they got to your website here and uh, they fill out a form, so either they fill out a trial or a contact page, or as um, you guys have recommended, if they sign up for an event on your website, any of those options can go ahead and kick off a campaign through our form option here. Um, now, connecting forms in our product is pretty straightforward. So you're just gonna drop this shape down on the canvas and you're gonna hit track new form. And that's gonna basically open up this next page here um, which is going to ask us to put in the details of the contact form. Now on my website here, this is just kind of a dummy website I have, I have a contact page and this could be the same as a form that you have for someone signing up for an event or someone signing up for a free trial, but this is basically going to be connected to my Autopilot account. So all I need to do is take the URL on my website, go into Autopilot, and we're just gonna paste the URL here into the form URL. Now you can name the form whatever you want, it can be you know, event sign up, it could be free trial or just contact form, but you can name it whatever you'd like and you can connect multiple forms to autopilot. So you're not limited to just one, you can have as many as you'd like. And if we hit the continue option, what's going to happen is autopilot's going to quickly scan the page where your form is and it's going to tell us how many things it's found. Um, so <laughs> looks like you guys are pretty excited on how easy it is to connect this, it's awesome. Um, here it tells us that it's found eight fields. And if we go back and check the web page for a second, we can see here that you know there are eight fields. So um, the product does scan that quite quickly and you can then go ahead and validate. But we found eight fields and if we hit continue, all we need to do here is connect the fields to data sets in autopilot. So autopilot should quickly be able to connect things like email, first name and last name. But again, what's cool about our product is any custom data you wanna track, you can track. So if autopilot does not find fields like for instance, description and subject, I can go ahead and, let me just scroll down here. What I can do is I can actually just create a custom field that correlates to any of the data sets that I'm trying to capture on the form on my website. So I would simply just say, you know, description here, and now I can start to track text data, check boxes, numeric information, and date fields in autopilot. So it is really easy to go ahead and create um, custom fields in our product that correlate to any of the data sets on your form. So we'll just go ahead and hit done, and we've now just successfully connected that contact page on our website to Autopilot, and it honestly takes about 30 seconds to a minute to do it. So that's the start of our campaign. Now what we're going to do is as soon as someone fills out that event form or that trial sign up, generally we're gonna send them an email that's just going to confirm that we received it and to thank them. So it's basically a visual workflow builder in Autopilot, and all you need to do is drag one shape to the next, and that will determine the order of events in our campaign. So what I can do here is we're gonna create an email next, and uh, email is a pretty big part, so we'll kind of focus on this for a little bit here, but you can actually access all of your emails once you've created them. So once you've created existing email templates, you can always revisit them from this list here, or you can simply create a new email from scratch. And with our email, email builder, you've got a few options. Um, there's a question coming through, can you add video to the email? Um, so you absolutely can embed HTML in our email. So you can embed images, you could have a video in there, you could embed a link to a video. Um, so I'd recommend testing it out, but you should be able to do anything that's standard HTML in our email builder. So you've got three primary options here on the email builder. And the first one is you can just start from blank. Uh, template. So you can just build your own email from scratch. You can have it look like a standard email that would be sent out from your Gmail account or Outlook. Um, you can also go ahead and if you guys have existing email templates, so if you guys are coming over from MailChimp or from another system, you can actually take all of your pre-built emails and simply upload the HTML to Autopilot so you don't have to rebuild them all from scratch.
The third option is you can use our template builder. So we've got about six pre-built templates that you can choose from. And here we'll just say, uh, you know, sign up, whether it's an event sign up or trial sign up, we'll say sign up, welcome email here. And we're just gonna send our customers an email saying, hey, thanks for signing up for our service. And you can choose from one of these six pre-built templates through autopilot. So we've got this congratulations, this welcome email. I'll just choose that one for now. <clears throat> And there's a few things I do like to point out on the email builder here. Um, a question coming through, are the templates responsive? Um, so our templates are responsive. So all of those six templates that I showed you, all of them should automatically um, adjust if you're on mobile or an iPad or you know a tablet, um, or if you're um, checking out your email online on your website, or sorry, <laughs> on your computer. They are responsive templates, so they should work on all different um, platforms. And a few of the cool things you can do here would be that, first off, you can choose the email address that you want the email to be sent on behalf of. Now, you can actually get your own domain approved. So we send our emails through SendGrid, but you can go ahead and actually connect your email domain to Autopilot so it sends on behalf of your domain as well. Um, and you can do that for multiple email domains. What's kind of cool here is you can choose who you want the email to come from as well as that email address. And in addition to that, um, there's another cool thing I want to point out here. We do have dynamic insertion, so we call these personalization variables. Um, but basically, any of that custom data you're tracking about your users, so for instance, if they filled out a form for an event on your website and you track the name of the event they signed up for, you can inject that into the email saying, thanks for signing up for our event. So you could say, you know, thanks for you know, registering for our event. And then you could actually inject the name of the event from a custom field. Here I've got other things like donations made, lifetime spend of a customer, um, things of these nature. But again, you can put in the event name as well into here. And um, these, dynam uh, these personalization variables can be customized too. So there's defaults where if they don't have that data injected, you can say equals to this word then instead. Now, um, again, these are responsive templates, and you can go in here and swap out the images, um, the content. You can add your own hyperlinks. Um, but this is just giving you kind of a template to work with here. And once you've done this, you can actually go ahead and send yourself a test just to verify that everything looks good and it looks proper um, in all of your different um, email providers. So you can check against Gmail, Outlook. We should work in all systems. Once you're done configuring this email, you'll just hit publish and you'll hit add shape to the canvas. And now we've actually created a campaign so far. We'll, we'll get a little bit more technical than this, but if we just stopped here, as soon as someone fills out a form on the website, we're gonna send them this email. So that's kind of a cool start uh, to the campaign. Now we're gonna do a few other things. So generally when someone signs up for a free trial or even for an event, we may ask this person to do some things, whether it's filling out their profile or registering by clicking on a link in an email and completing the registration process. Um, what I'm gonna show you guys is sort of an onboarding process that might go run the span of let's say a week or two to try and get this person more engaged. So if we're gonna go with this concept of someone signing up for an event or a trial, what we're going to do here is we've sent them this first email just saying welcome to our system. What we might do is we might wait a few days and then we can send them another email just recommending some things they might do like uh, best practices for getting started with our product or um, hey, you signed up for this event, here are some other events that are coming up in a few weeks that you might be interested in. So what we can do is we can add a delay, which means that after we sent that first email, we're gonna give the person a few days and then we'll send them another one. So when I pull from the email option, you'll notice, by the way, that this wheel pops up. This is called the outcome wheel. This means that we can kind of choose from a few options on how we wanna move the customer to the next phase of our campaign. I can start this counter as soon as I send out the email. So as soon as I send them that welcome email, I can just start waiting a number of days, hours, or minutes. Um, but I could also say only take the person to the next step if they open my email. Or if uh, they click on a link in the email, then take them in another direction. So you can start to build out very um, targeted and complex journeys in autopilot. And that's why the visual editor really makes it easy to kind of follow the different paths that you can take your customers through. Um, 
So we're going to go ahead and as soon as we send the email, I'm going to add a delay. And here I can go ahead and choose if I want it to be in weeks, days, hours, or minutes. But we'll go ahead and let's just wait maybe two days. Another really cool thing that we've just rolled out, you can enable windows. So for instance, I may not want to send an email on a Saturday or a Sunday because people generally aren't reading their email. And so here I can choose a window where I'm saying only send this email out on Monday, you know, Monday through Friday, but we're still going to have that two day timer. That just means that if the two day timer started on a Thursday, we'll actually wait till the following Monday to send the email. And yeah, um, someone's pretty excited. So one of the comments here is like, wow, you can actually only send them um, uh, an email after they clicked on a link. So um, a good example is that that's exactly right. If you send someone a link to a video in your email, you can actually wait two days and we're going to take them on a different journey. But here we can go ahead and actually as soon as they click on a link in the email, we could start a separate notification. Um, or even if we wanted to notify our sales team, for instance, that, hey, this person engaged in the content we sent them, we might do something like this where we say as soon as they clicked and watched the video that we sent them, notify the sales team just to say, hey, this person is a highly interested individual. So we have notify you know, wrap a visit, um, or we can just create a new notification. You can also do a Slack channel if you want it to pop up in Slack, like you might have seen my Slack channel has been going off here. But we could go ahead and say, you know, notify um, team of engaged customers. And we can go ahead and then shoot an email out internally. So unlike the emails that we're sending customers here, we might just say, um, we can put in the name of the customer, for instance. We can say so-and-so at X company. Um, has watched um, initial content and then we can go ahead and just send this to the sales team at mycompany.com and we'll just go ahead and we can put all the information about this customer like name, company, phone number um, and then they can go ahead and reach back out to the person saying hey you know it looks like you've been pretty interested in our product so far um, wanted to see if it was worth setting up a call anything like that so you can kind of inject a bunch of this information into an email and uh, this is an internal notification. <clears throat> awesome. Um, glad you like it, Geoff. Uh, thanks for all the positive feedback. Looks like people are pretty stoked so far. Um, it does make things a hell of a lot easier if you've used other systems. So um, what we're going to do next, and if you guys have any questions, again, don't hesitate to ask, or if you want to take this campaign in a different direction, I'm happy to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we've sent, we've had someone fill out the form on the website. We sent them an email. We'll wait two days. Um, if they engage with that content in the first email, we'll notify our sales team or we can notify just the team internally. But now we're going to take another step and this actually gets really cool. Um, so we went ahead and sent that first email over here, but now we can actually see if they did anything with it. So we've got a condition. So, so far we've done a trigger, we've done an action, and then we're doing a condition over here. With the conditions, we can check to see if they actually engage in that email. And just another thing I like to point out is that this canvas continues to expand. There's no right or wrong way to build out a campaign. You could build it out in multiple directions, like a snowflake. You could build it from top to bottom. If you run out of space, you just expand this here and you can zoom out. And it's just going to keep on expanding. Now, what I want to do here is depending on whether or not someone engaged with my email, I want to take a certain action. So this is kind of cool here. Here we can go ahead and if nobody, if this person never opened my email, um, then what I might want to do is, sorry, I grabbed the wrong one here. Let me close that out. I might want to do an in-product notification. So this is a really cool feature we just rolled out a few months ago. And basically, if I know that someone's not responding to email, well, then we can go ahead and pop up a message. So if they ever go back to the website again, they'll see this pop-up message. And here we can go ahead and you can see from the list of options in the condition, I can see if they opened the email, if they didn't open my email, if they clicked on the link, if they did not click on the link or if they unsubscribed um, as well. And here you can see if we just never sent them an email because they maybe didn't have an email address, I can go ahead and also do an in-product message. But here we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, in the event that no one ever opened my email, let's go ahead and pop up a message on the website. So this is called our heads up messaging. And I can just go ahead and hit new message. And there's three initial message options. You can pop up a message with a button. That's sort of like a call to action. We can go ahead and actually set it up so if they go to the website, we can ask a question where they can type back to us. Or if they just go to a certain event, so I know that some of you are interested in if someone signs up for an event on your website, 
you could go ahead and say, hey, we noticed that you liked events that have to do with sports. Um, why don't you subscribe to our weekly sports newsletter? So we can have them subscribe to newsletters based on certain pages that they might visit on your website as well. And here what I'm going to have is um, maybe we'll just say uh, sign up for a demo. So just like you guys are here today, um, if someone never opened that initial email I sent them welcoming to our product or to our event, we might just have this pop up on the website. And uh, the cool thing here is we can choose if this message should pop up on any part of our website where you put that tracking code or if it's just going to show up on very specific pages, like maybe on the pricing page, we'll ask them if they have any questions. But we'll go ahead and hit continue here. And uh, you can choose who you want the message to pop up from. So here you've got, uh, you know, the name and title or it can pop up from a generic user. And then we can go ahead and use this um, content. So any of the custom fields and name information that we're tracking um, either through our bulk upload again or through any of the other systems like Salesforce, we can access all of that custom data. And here we can just go ahead and say, you know, hey, and put their first name in. So, hey, Mike, and you can see it building on the left. We'll just say, um, you know, thanks for signing up for our product. Um, let me know if you, or you can actually say if you would like a demo of our product, um, sign up here. And then what you can do is you're just going to say whatever you want in the button here. So sign up for demo. Um, and then you just need to go and find the link that you want to drive people to. So you'd go to your demo sign up page or wherever you want to drive them, just copy the link here. And then you're just going to paste that, um, on the next page actually. You can choose what color you want the button to look like to match the branding of your website. And then here we just add the link to that page. And when we hit continue, it's gonna give us a little example of what this would look like. Now this in-product messaging does work in apps as well. So you can put it in your web app or on your website, or you can put it in your help center or your landing pages. And then when people mouse over it, it expands. And then we can go ahead and if they click on that, it's going to take them to the page where they can sign up for whatever it is that you're driving them towards. So that's called our heads up messaging. And again, that's another cool feature that you might consider leveraging in addition to your emails. Um, one of the big things that we tout here at Autopilot is that it's not really just marketing um, automation in the sense of sending one campaign, like let me send out a newsletter or let me send out a, a standard email. We really like to think of the customer journey as kind of a whole journey from the process of getting to your website, learning about your website, signing up for your product, maybe testing it out and then revisiting in the future. So the cool thing about Autopilot is you can build these longer, more engaging campaigns that can combine text messages, emails, in-product messaging, um, even postcards. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do um, by leveraging a number of the channels together. Now, what we've done so far is we've sent that email. If they didn't open the email, we send them a heads up message. Now, if they did open the email and click the link, we might want to then um, send people in one direction, or if they opened up the email and didn't click on the link, then we might want to send people in a different direction. So the kind of cool thing is we can start to build out multiple um, directions for this campaign. So here I'm going to go ahead and we'll just say, okay, um, if they did click the link, this is considered an engaged user. And if they didn't, but they open the email at least uh, right here, we're gonna send them a different email. So we might in this email try to get them to still engage in that content, and that's kind of like what we call top of funnel. And then at the bottom, and people who have engaged in the content get slightly more targeted email pushing them to do something else. Um, so this is kind of another cool thing that we can do is we can start to build out different um, branches of our campaign based on someone who's more engaged and someone who's less engaged. And if at any point, the person in the top funnel here actually clicks on that link and engages, then we can go ahead and drive them into the second bottom tier um, of the more engaged users. So um, does that make sense so far, everybody? And any questions? <clears throat> cool. All right. And I don't want to do that on bounce. I actually wanted to do that on click. So this is kind of a, a, just a standard um, campaign. There's a lot more that you can do. And uh, some other cool things I wanna point out just so you guys can see um, some of the value in our product is that up top, the person who did click on the content and was engaged, we might wanna go ahead and actually update some data about this user. So sorry, let me make some more room here on the canvas. 
Um, whoop. All right, so um, what we might want to do is you can update data sets in our product and in Salesforce. So a pretty cool thing you can do here is on click, we can go ahead and at any point along the way where somebody has engaged with that content, we can update these fields in the contact. Uh, so we can go ahead and just say, <clears throat> any of the custom data sets that we have here, like did they attend um, a demo? So maybe if what we we're trying to do is get them to click on a link, to sign up for a demo, which is kind of what we we're asking them to do with this in product messaging, we can go ahead and say at any point, if they sign up for a demo, Let's update that field and we'll say true. And that will turn the checkbox into a positive. So the cool thing is throughout the campaign, not only are we sending customers emails or in product messages or text messages, but if they respond to those, not only are we going to you know, continue to market to them in a more targeted fashion, but we can update our data sets in autopilot. So we can say this person did go to the pricing page. This person has signed up for an event or they have actually signed up for a demo. And later on, when we create our next campaign, using a smart segment, which was um, that sort of contact builder, the list builder, I could say, I wanna send out a campaign email to anybody who has signed up for an event and who has viewed the video in the first email I sent them. So again, updating data sets can be very helpful later on for creating very targeted campaigns. So again, you can update data sets by hitting update field here. <clears throat> So some other really cool things I want to point out um, would be that we have uh, an A-B splitter. So uh, for instance, and I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too many shapes on the canvas here, but down below, we have the customer down here who is more engaged. So we sent them the first email, they clicked on the link, we sent them a second email here. And what's kind of cool is we can start to do what's called our A-B splitter and test different methods. And so here we go on send, we're going to split people into two different groups. Now I can choose the percentage of how many people will go in one direction and the other. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and say, well, let's send a text message to 50% of the people. And then we'll see how they respond to text messages. And the other 50% of the people we could send a postcard for instance. And then we can kind of wait and see which one performs better. In both these scenarios, we might send somebody, um, to a URL, maybe we'll print it on the postcard and send that in the mail. And then with SMS, we might text message them saying, hey, we've got a great holiday promo. Um, click on the link here and check it out. And what's kind of cool is we can check against conditions again. We can create a landing page in both cases that we're sending um, these individuals to. And then we can go ahead and see if they ended up hitting that landing page. And I can do that even by checking from a physical postcard that I've sent them or from a text message. Text message is really easy to do in autopilot. You honestly just open up the shape and you type in whatever you want to send them. And you can use all of those customization options or sorry, any of the personalization variables. So, you know, hey Matt, um, check out our holiday offers at this link. And then you can put in your link here. And uh, now your SMS message is set up. On the postcard side, you can actually create a postcard and send it to a physical address, which is kind of cool. So if you're in the hospitality industry, that's a really popular use case. If you have a event, as you mentioned, that someone signs up for, maybe after they attend their first event, you can send them a postcard um, thanking them for attending the event. We did something similar to that at our Salesforce Dreamforce conference. Um, that we attended, we sent all of the people who attended our, or came by our booth, we sent them a postcard thanking them. And this allows you to upload an image and even customize the messaging on the back of the postcard. Um, and you can again put people's names and any custom info about them into that postcard as well. And then what we can do is check to see if they got to that landing page. So here we can just say, did they visit a specific URL on our webpage? And if I wanna do that, I'll just go in and maybe I wanna see if they visited my pricing page for instance. So I can just go ahead and add this and it's going to scan that URL and then I can go ahead and say if they did, do X. So it detects the code and now here I'll say, okay, great. If they did go to that landing page, then we know it was success. And if they did not, then maybe send them a follow-up email. So this is basically kind of the standard concept behind autopilot. Um, 
I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but as you can see, it's really easy for anybody, even if you hire somebody new on your team, to come in and see exactly how these campaigns flow based on the workflow, um, which is a lot easier than kind of standard marketing automation solutions, which are more text-based. Um, I haven't really touched on Salesforce yet. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions about that. I do want to get to reporting really quickly. So what we're going to do is check out reporting, and then we'll come back, and I'll be happy to answer any other questions. <clears throat> so we've got a few different ways of handling reporting in Autopilot. The first one is kind of campaign-wide, and you can narrow it down. But if you click on the reports icon on the left, this is going to bring up our reporting options. Now we've got email reporting, and we've got the in-product messaging reporting as well. And this is going to tell you, you can select a date range of your preference, and then it's going to tell you reporting um, performance across all of your campaigns. Now you can narrow this down to a specific campaign, and you can also do the same to narrow down to a specific email, but it's going to give you initial reporting across all of your campaigns and all of your emails. And what it's going to tell us is what the open rates were for your campaigns, um, how many people clicked on links in your campaign, so the click rate, and then clicks per unique open. So that's like how many times do people click on links in each email uniquely when they look at it. Um, the cool thing about this is it's all um, drill down capable, meaning that I can see everyone who was added to a campaign or a journey. I can see their information, uh, how many emails we sent them, if any of those emails bounced, um, if they had already received an email from us, and you can see other information too, like open rates and click rates. Um, down below, we can see that. So, you know, each email, how many opens did it get, who opened those emails, who clicked on those emails. Um, so again, you can see how many people unsubscribed, um, but it's all accessible um, through this reporting. And the cool thing about this reporting is that you can see other information like which links are performing the best in your emails, um, which campaigns are performing the best here, um, and which customers are the most engaged. So you can actually see up top who's engaging most heavily, and you could have this report sent to your sales team so they can follow up with those most engaged customers and close them. To send emails to your team up top, you can just click on this little clock, and this will allow you to choose which reports you want to send people, how frequently you want to send out um, an email to them, and at what time. And then you'll just add all the people who should have this report. So maybe your CMO, uh, or your director of marketing, or just people on the sales team, you may want to send these reports to um, so that they can act on those. Now, if you want to look at reporting as well um, on an individual email basis, not only can you narrow it down up here by just clicking on only the email you want to see, but I'll show you an easier way of looking at reporting in a campaign as well. So if we go into a, an open journey that's actually active, like these three, um, if I jump into one, what I can do is I can actually click on reporting here, and I'll show you this. Um, in this active campaign, there's a live view option, and the live view is going to tell us where people are in the journey. So this is kind of cool. For starters, you can see there's a number here. This is how many people have gone through each step of this campaign. It started with 40 people, and if you see a number in the bottom right corner, that means that you have that many people waiting to go to the next step, or that's where they've ended. So basically, 40 people came in, <coughs> They pushed through the form, we checked a data field, and then they moved on, and then we sent 37 of them a text message because three people didn't have phone numbers. Now, if I want to add another shape, that means that there's 37 people waiting at this point. So if I continue to build this campaign out and add another shape here, it's going to push these 37 people to the next step. So this is a good way to check how many people are flowing through your campaign. <clears throat> now, I also can see here reporting. So when you're in live view, um, you can basically click on this, and this will bring me into reporting details that are specific to just this email. You'll also see that same reporting option on any of the in-product messaging. So you'll see that same little kind of reporting icon. But this will pull up um, how the performance of this email looks. And I can, again, drill in and see everyone who got that specific email um, and if they opened it and if they clicked on it. Um, all right, thanks, Geoff. I appreciate it. Um, I do have a recording of this, so I'll try and send it out to you here uh, after the webinar. Um, thanks again for all the questions and for the interest. Hope you have a great day. <clears throat>
And so that's pretty much the basics of reporting. If you guys have any other questions about reporting, I'm happy to answer it. But at this point, we've got about 10 minutes left in the webinar. I feel like we've run through most of the basics. Um, we haven't really touched on in integrations a lot. So um, I'm happy to answer any other questions that you guys have um, about any areas of the product. And if you have questions about specifically integrations, I'm happy to answer those as well. So we'll kind of just open up the rest of the webinar here for the next 10 minutes to Q&A. Um, so feel free to ask as many questions as you guys would like. Just gonna wait a few seconds here and see if anything comes through. So question coming through, for an event, um, if I want to mail out a postcard and have the postcard be the ticket needed to attend the event, you could do that. So um, basically, uh, kind of building on this concept of someone signing up for an event, um, what you could do is we'll hit a new journey here and we'll hit start from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll just call this um, event sign up and ticketing. So we can go ahead and we'll lock that in and what we'll do is if someone goes to the event page, we connect the form, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're capturing um, that person's address. So you can just say billing information or you know, give us your address to register for the event. Um, just make sure you connect the fields for um, street, city, uh, zip code. So you should have all those fields as standard fields in our product, and you can just map those over from your event sign-up form. Once you do that, basically, um, what we can do is we can then just simply drop over the mail postcard option. So all you need to do is you're going to create a custom postcard for each event, and you'll just come in here and... We'll hit new postcard, and if you're in the U.S., you can send a 4x6 or a 6x11. If you're international, so meaning any other country besides the U.S., um, you can only send a standard 4x6, which is okay because that's really the most common one that people send anyway. And we can just say ticket to event, um, you know, concert. <clears throat> and uh, another question, is there a way to chain journeys? So you can chain journeys. I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, I'll run through this postcard and then I'll show you how to do that. You can actually run multiple journeys at the same time or you can have people go from one journey to another journey. Um, they can be built, you can build multiple journeys on one canvas or you can create multiple journeys, you know, um, standalone, but they can still connect to each other. Um, yeah, so I'll show you that in one second. On the postcard here, if you want to send a ticket to the event, you can just say from, you know, events or your company's name. So you just put your company events and you'll just put in the address for your company if you want to it's optional but this is like the return address so you can put in you know my company street um, city state etc and then here is the back of the postcard so you can just put the name of the person and say you know hey Matt um, you know here is the ticket for your event um, on and you can put the date of the event in if you're tracking event date here, um, you'll just put the date of the event and just say, you know, if you have any questions uh, or need to cancel, you know, please contact us at, and you can put in your phone number here. And then you just say, thanks, my company team. And then you'll go to the next, and uh, I think I gotta put something in here. And then you can upload an image, which would be the ticket um, for the actual event. So there's that. And then you'll just hit continue. Now, um, in order to chain journeys together, so a question here was, can I run multiple campaigns and connect somebody from one campaign to another? And the way that you can do that is, so we've added somebody, as soon as they fill out a form on the website, they'll get sent the postcard. And then what we can do is this. We can add them to a list. And uh, if I add someone to a list, I might say, uh, I'll create a new list, which I'll say, you know, attended first event. <clears throat> and then what I can do is start a second campaign. Um, 
basically with that list. So as soon as here it adds them to the list, then I can start off a new campaign with what's called a list trigger here. And this one will just be based off of that list, which is attended first event. So basically, you can build these out separately, but what we have now is that as soon as somebody fills out and completes this campaign, they get added to a list, and then that starts off another campaign from a list trigger. Um, one other thing I didn't show you guys is uh, if you want to send out like a one-time email blast or a newsletter, which is a pretty common thing to do with marketing, um, we have this time trigger. <clears throat> and the time trigger allows you to send out an email at a specific day and time. So I can go ahead and say I can send it to all contacts or a specific list, but I can go ahead and just say uh, let's send on um, Thursday or we could even put in just a date. But I could even do something like tomorrow at 10 a.m. The system should recognize that. <clears throat> then you can go ahead and choose your time zone here and um, select what time zone you want to send it on. And that means that now I can just preload an email so that it goes out tomorrow at 10 a.m. And that's another campaign you can build out. The cool thing is that here I've got three campaigns, three journeys all running in one canvas. You can do it all together or to organize it better, you might actually build them out independently. But you do have that ability there. <clears throat> Any other questions? And let me go ahead and I'll get that discount code if you guys are interested. It doesn't work on our lowest plan, which is 500 contacts, but it does work on any other plan. And if you guys choose to um, use this code, you can just put it in whenever you're ready to move forward with our product. And it should be good for 30% off of an annual commitment. So I just wanted to send that back to everybody there. So it looks like we've got about two minutes left on the webinar. You guys have been great. Um, I really appreciate all the questions and the engagement. It's always better when people uh, are involved in the demo. So my name is Matt Van Loan. I'll just put my info in here. Um, so I'm Matt at autopilothq.com and I'll send that to you guys. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to email. We're always happy to help here. And if we need to jump on a call and walk you through how to use the system, we can always um, put some time aside for that. So again, we really appreciate your interest in autopilot. We hope that this makes your marketing uh, a hell of a lot easier and more fun. So again, if you guys have any feedback for us, let us know if there's anything about the product you'd like to see added or improved. We're always Always um, positive to any feedback we get so um, we really appreciate you attending today's webinar and I'll look forward to working with you guys but have a great day